This is my quantum memoir, and this will be my book report on ISIS. So last week I did a book report on um, myself. How could I forget that? <laughs> I did a book report on Molly Muse. I did, did it on myself and Know Thyself page. Um, and that was really enlightening. It was really good. Then the next page that I did that I didn't do a book report on was a quantum knowing. It was basically a tarot spread um, with each one of the seed words. And that was kind of exciting. Um, so I had this great momentum of energy that I had from my ride along, um, from doing the moon chart with a few different people. Um, to doing the know thyself page with a few different people um, and then coming to this quantum knowing like I had all this like intense great energy um, everything getting great news everything was going so swimmingly well <laughs> and then um, I hit a roadblock and evidently um, my three-dimensional consciousness um, has mommy issues so um, that translates into being a mother being a daughter being a sister being a wife as a woman, that pretty much means that I have a problem with myself. Um, and it became evident um, specifically in a conversation that I had with my mother-in-law um, this past week that um, this was something that I needed to explore much deeper. I couldn't um, skirt around it. It was, it was in my face. It was obvious that it was something that I needed to do. So with my newfound leadership skills and compassion for others, I was struggling between wanting to share and express this feeling that I have about the feminine energy being imbalanced in the world and in myself and in my relationships um, with the compassion that if I share my details and my story, it's gonna hurt somebody else. And I didn't wanna do that. Like, my purpose should have been mother and um, I didn't feel comfortable with making it about that. So I made it about the feminine energy as a whole. And I use Isis as an example to be the archetype of um, what does a positive female role model look like? And which, what, what will be interesting is that this, this uh, journey of wanting to find the mother, the feminine energy is a lot like the energy of trying to find and not find God. Like they seem to be the same um, thing about this creator. Oh, I think something got in my shirt. I think I got something jumped up and bit me. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, now I'm gonna be creeped out the whole time. <sighs> um, obviously I have this, uh, this, uh, I put it in my observation, conflicting perspectives between searching and not searching, found and not found, mother and father, God and myself. Um, these seem to be the same pattern, just overlaying in different scenarios and relationships. So while this page is titled Isis, it's really about the mother and the female energy um, that I was looking for as a role model for myself. Um, so that was my purpose. <sighs> I'm just gonna slow down here for a second. I'm um, also distracted by um, the people that are in the spot across from me. So this is a practice for me to exercise my voice and speak about what I'm passionate and true about um, without being intimidated or distracted by other people, which is basically another overall theme in my life. So intention, forgive the suppression of the divine feminine energy which means that I have suppressed it in myself, I have suppressed it in other women, I have suppressed it in other men, and I'm gonna forgive myself for doing that. I'm gonna give forgiveness to society for putting us in these boxes to where men cannot express these things and women are um, emotional or powerless to express them. Um, what I came to in my next sphere was um, the body sphere. All right, I think they're done banging. <sighs> I start talking and they start banging. So this is patience and compassion. This person isn't doing this to me. Um, 
it's not uh, disrespectful or unaware of him to be doing that. Like he shouldn't assume that I'm making a video and that that would be distracting to me and also uh, mess up my audio. Like I can't expect these thoughts to go through other people's minds. But those things do all the time or like have all the time gone through my mind. And so they take me out of the present moment and they create misery, misery in me um, in my new moment. Um, so eventually he'll be done banging on whatever he's done banging on. All right. So I'm trying to observe where my block is right now to be talking to the camera. Um, it's definitely in my distraction between me and the other people that are going on around me. I want to keep going with what my next sphere was, and that was the body sphere. And ironically, this would actually probably pertain to right now. It is safe to be a woman. And so what I'm noticing is that um, there's a man walking by, and there's, oh, there's my friend! sweet little sign, this cute little doggy. Um, it is safe to be a woman in this body. I can be at home in my physical body and feelings. So this is what I'm trying to ground. Okay, so this is, <sighs> you see all of these signs, like the next sphere that I had to do is this message. And I still obviously, even though I wrote it in my book, I didn't get the message because I'm being pulled out of my physical body and being constricted in thought and feeling because I am I feel like I have to be aware of what's going on around me. Either for being judged or being interrupted, um, whatever whatever you know I might label it or attach it to. The overall thing is that I don't think that it's safe to sit here and talk to you without paying attention to my outside surroundings, which isn't true. <laughs> um, I am safe here. I am safe in my body and I'm safe in my feelings. So, so now, now that I recognize that it's not about the sacral chakra, it's about the root chakra that you feel safe as a woman in your body. Um, if you're a man, you feel safe in your energy of the feminine. Um, that these things are not going to get you ostracized or pointed at or judged um, or harmed in any way because you embody this energy. Um, so really, it probably could be, it is safe to be feminine. And that's really what the quote should be. And I suppose at this point, I hadn't really got to, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. Um, so if I had to do a revision for this page, which I've never felt that I would need to do that, but I see now how I, it was a conclusion that I came to, and I think I'm actually going to write it in here, is that it is safe to be feminine. So this is kind of what I've come to in this page, and that'll be more evident as we talk about it in this book report. But now that I feel safe, I'm in the flow. I can tell you about the rest of the book. All right, so I'll color that in later. So now I recognize I couldn't do the sacral chakra. I had to do um, the body and recognize that my body is rooted. I am safe in this physical vessel that I live in. From that, I went over to ground. So if I hadn't mentioned it yet, what I was trying to do is I was trying to find a positive female role model for me to understand the program like the, the storyline, the plot of what that would look like. What could I embody? How could I um, refine myself in a way that would take on a positive feminine role model? And when I came to the ground sphere, it was during the fall equinox. And I was sitting outside and enjoying the weather and the birds and the leaves and fall and everything. So I realized that the true feminine nature um, in the universe, you know, not necessarily in humans, but in the universe is, is the cycle of nature, is mother nature, is Gaia. So if there was anybody, <laughs> any body, she's a body, she's a planetary body, right? If there was any body that I should embody the, em the energy of the feminine, it would be the earth, true feminine nature. 
and um, Mother Earth is the mother archetype. Um, so is Isis, so is the High Priestess. Um, but this was a way that I could observe it in a symbolic way. Then I came to the chakra sphere. And since it was my, my Monday had passed, my sacral chakra, you know, I could still have put that. I felt it like since I was actually addressing it on a Tuesday when it was my solar plexus day, that this was actually what the universe needed me to focus on, my higher self needed me to see. Not the sacral sexiness, but the solar plexus, the confidence that I am okay to be in this body. Um, so what I came to, take no counsel outside of your own. She definitely embodied the solar plexus, the confident that she knew what she was doing, that she would be able to accomplish what she was doing um, and just did it. You know, again, like I was ready and hot to just get on my observe sphere, but I couldn't, I didn't have clarity for exactly what is it that I'm observing that seems to be the problem. Um, I know there's a problem because I'm suffering, but I, I'm clouded by the experience to see what is the overall problem and not the one that I had with one person, you know, um, about, the, you know, a specific detail or situation. It was the umbrella one that was occurring over and over and over again. Um, so I, I still didn't get to do the observe sphere. Where I went is I went over to numerology. And with that one, um, I figured I had to do, instead of doing, you know, like a specific number, I chose it through the tarot, through the high priestess, since we're talking about Isis and the feminine energy. Um, so what I did is I kind of did some research on the high priestess and then the number two, because the high priestess is representative of the number two. Um, and, and the shape of a two is feminine, it's curving, it's bending like a willow tree. And I don't, I'm not sure exactly what I, you know, what I was reading or what I was consuming, but um, the call came out to me. So I put the call. So it's kind of the high priestess is um, with, you know, the symbolism of Isis is that she's putting out the call for the feminine energy to, to rise again. And it's not to rise to conquer and to take over. It's to rise to heal and balance and um, become an, another new creative unique force. I came to um, recognizing that I've heard the call and you know it's through my ride-alongs that I've done, it's through this moon, I guess it's a moon ride-along that I've done this past moon with a few people um, that I have sisterhood. Like whatever I thought that I was looking for, um, I have sisterhood. I've created an environment where um, I'm going to say divinely feminine energy can get together. Just being wholeheartedly honest souls helping another soul. And um, I put, I started with sisterhood and then I thought, you know what? No, this isn't, this isn't right. And this is what I'm trying to get to with this page is that if I put sisterhood, then I'm excluding a very important part of me, which is the masculine. I, I am also masculine. So my connect was to recognize that it's not just a mother that I want, a sister that I want, um, sisterhood that I want. Um, I want to have sincere, authentic, intimate relationships with all people. Um, and that's regardless of their gender or sexuality or any of those things, just like um, soul to soul, like, you know, um, heart to heart, you know, sort of relationships. We are one in every being. Like, so every one of us has feminine energy and masculine energy. And um, it's the intuition meeting one another with appropriate balance in our, you know, in our connection. So there's so much more to be said about that than just in this one sphere. And I imagine that is something that I'm going to continue to explore. I'm kind of excited about. Oh, so I've been doing such great um, mes meditations lately. I do a better job meditating with my eyes open. You know, so I have my naptation. I like laying down um, and that's great with my eyes closed. But what I've been doing is um, I've been listening to Sadhguru and talking about posture and your spine. So I've been trying to sit up and meditate. And uh, I recognize that I like having my eyes open and doing the visualization. So I did a few guided meditations this week and those are on my citation playlist on YouTube that, um, and this one in particular with Isis, 
was it was insane because I had my eyes open and I could visualize myself sitting there with my eyes open looking out and the visualization that the narrator was telling me to envision and my own interpretation and changes in, in perspective and, and timeline um, incongruencies with what she was, you know, what she was uh, narrating. Um, and it was just an absolutely beautiful experience. I was so excited for that one. And I wrote down um, basically like a conversation that I was having with my, with her, with Isis, the high priestess, which was actually in effect myself. All right, I was having that, gui that guided Isis meditation and in the meditation, she had us hold our hands out. So I was holding my hands out and um, she was giving us a tool that was gonna help us. And all I could see was like a long rectangular shape in my hands, like it had no form. It was just like a box, basically. It was nothing, it had no specific form, no unique form. And I was like, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what that, what that is. And so then it was just clearly um, I heard it is a tool and then it was a microphone in my hands. So I have that doodle of um, the microphone being in my hands. So I thought, oh, I wonder if um, I'm more feminine or more masculine, like through my astrology, I wonder how that plays out in my pers my persona that I put forward and um, how, if I need to alter that, like if it's in balance. So I, I, I went to research that. So what I did is I, I put fire, earth, air, and water, and then I put all of the signs and I put whether they were yin or yang, and then I to totaled up and I came to the yin and yang of it, you know, of my elements. And I wrote divinely balanced because I have an equal amount of yin elements to yang elements. Reread the story of Isis again. And what I gathered was this thing. My husband and I kept coming across the number 14. And we were even talking about how it seems to be significantly standing out for some reason. And we want to keep our eyes out for it. But it was definitely before I did the sphere. Um, and what I recognized was, oh, I just killed a little spider. Oh, shit. I'll lose some merit for that. His little bloody remains are going to be on my book forever. Oh. I'll put the rest of you back on the earth. Ah. Interesting. Rejoin the fragments. So with the story of Isis, she goes searching for all of these pieces of Osiris, which is the masculine energy in my opinion, you know, in relation to what I have going on the page. She's, it's her responsibility to go take these pieces of the masculine energy, um, the yang, and put them back together and recreate something new. This is the role and the responsibility of the feminine energy. So what, I, what my expression was is that I recognize that my Isis, my feminine energy, is now coming forward and taking all of the pieces of my masculine energy and my feminine energy, and she's, you know, like a like a wizard, a, a, mm, mm, like a witch, <laughs> a word that I didn't want to say, like a witch, like a, a magician, whatever the female magician is, I don't even know. Um, that's the point it's not a specific sex like a god like a goddess taking all of these pieces and um making a vessel that is whole enough that the true authentic expression can come through with magic <laughs> this is with magic and if you watched my other book report magic just seems to be something that like i'm I, what is the word? I feel like I'm too adult, like I'm too grown up to have interests in fairies and magical things, but I'm just enough curious and childlike 
that says, I don't believe you adult self, we're gonna do this anyways. And so my spirit, <laughs> my soul, and mother nature and Gaia is kind of coaxing me to it slowly. Uh, so hopefully more of those kinds of ideas of magic will trickle out and play um, in the you know in the whole page. But I see that I'm still very yang. I'm still very concise and constricted and controlled. And like what this page is right you know had me recognize is that's fine because time does not exist. Like I want to just let it. Um, I trust now that everything is going to work out. I don't have to try to like get to the bottom of anything and answer anything. I don't actually even want an answer. I just want to keep looking. <laughs> I just want to keep uh, seeking and playing and you know looking for all of those pieces of Osiris. So that's interesting um, that she did complete her, she never did though. There was always one piece that was missing. <laughs> there was always one piece that was missing that she didn't get to, to sew back in. The part that creates, that's interesting. Yeah, so the, I know that these are all little um, clues of something that I'm gonna come to later, like in the days or weeks from now. Or maybe a year from now. That's why I'm doing these book reports so I can look back and kind of string it all together and say, oh, this is how I come to that. This was the homework for me to get that one. Um, so after I expressed, um, refine. Once I realized that this is not about the feminine energy, this is about me being whole and complete and mixing these two energies yin and yang together to be me i not to be a woman like i'm not trying to be a woman i'm trying to be a whole human being um, yeah this was a really huge one that i need to stop um, keeping silent Ooh, ooh, my throat just got dry i gotta stop saying silent just because i think that um i'm gonna hurt somebody else I gotta know that when it's at the expense of myself that I need further details and more information to, uh, to proceed. After the refined sphere, I finally made it to observe. I recognized that what I thought that I was searching for was female relationship and companionship, but really it's that same seeking like we seek for God. So the point is that I was searching outside of myself, both in the other book report, you know, Molly Muse talking about God, and now Molly Muse talking about feminine energy, goddess. Like, I, I'm, I'm still, I was still having the same hunt, but I had a different prey, not knowing that the prey is a shapeshifter, and that um, it's both of these things. It's that masculine and feminine, a yin and yang. You know, that observation became very clear after going through this process and then seeing this page with my previous pages. So for me, it's really fascinating. Um, so what the observation is to take responsibility for ourselves, to parent ourselves, to empower the yin and yang of ourselves, to be the whole human being, right? Um, and I drew a little love note because I wrote a love note to myself. It's on my phone, so I can't actually read it. But um, it was basically saying that um, I got this. Like this is this is this has all been happening, even if I didn't acknowledge it and know it. But now I know it, so I can recognize that this is clear, and the slate is you know the ground is ready for you know the next uh the next level with the tarot what i decided to do the word of goddess came up i had i was flipping through doing my moon chart and i saw i had wrote the word of god and i was like you know what i'm gonna ask the tarot what is the word of goddess and when i wrote goddess i noticed that god is part of goddess that you, within that word, you have the yin and yang, you have both expressions 
of the energy, the yen, the yang and the yin, yang, god, um, des, yin, right? So are you following me on that? That the high priestess, the priest is the yang, the tes, the s is the yin. So within priestess, within goddess, within um, yin and yang, you have the divine or the feminine and the masculine energy. When these are playing together, I think that's what you know I would refer to as divine. When they're in a flow state, when they're energizing one another. So when, although I'm doing a page on feminine energy, the word of goddess to me is actually the, the alpha and the omega together, the all-encompassing thing, not just a woman, not just the high priestess, but the yen and yang energy. And I picked the six of pentacles reversed the answer that I got was create a healthy exchange of energy so that is that that yin and yang so that's my book report for the Isis page the mother page the divine feminine I realized that um, this page is not necessarily about me needing to know how to express these things or build these sorts of relationships that um, I see it's more of uh, less about my personal experience in my life and more about the expression of my life purpose which is to balance these these two energies together and um, as always I'm excited to see what the next page is going to be thank you for watching